Now let's discuss reading comprehension. The first thing that we want to discuss is identifying the main idea. The main idea is what the article is about or the paper is about. So there's two questions that you want to ask. The first one is, what is it about? And the second one is, what point is the author trying to make about the topic? These are two questions that you always want to ask. Some hints that I would recommend are the following. First, check out how many paragraphs there are on that topic that you chose. Are there multiple on the main idea that you chose or just one? If there's just one, most likely that's not the main idea. Next, you want to summarize the paragraphs. This is a great way to write one sentence about each paragraph. And then relook at those sentences. What is the main idea recurring in those sentences? Also, if you're a visual learner, you can visualize the paragraph as you're reading it. Lastly, check the titles. If there are titles, what does each one represent? What is a title? Is there a main idea throughout those titles? Now that we know the main idea, we want to identify the supporting details. And the supporting details are what provides the interest, the visual picture, and the examples about the main idea. And to be able to find these, you can do a couple of different things. First of all, you'll want to know if they are the extra details about the main idea. Also, to identify these, you can look for supporting words such as next, secondly, and finally to help find those supporting details. Lastly, make an outline. What is the big topic? And then what you want to do is list different ideas within the paper about that main topic. And those different ideas about the main topic are your supporting details. Now let's go over finding the meaning of words that you may not know in a passage. And the one big thing that you can do is you can look for context clues. Some examples of context clues would be a definition that the author may provide, a synonym, or an antonym. So a synonym, something similar, antonym, the opposite of the word you're looking at. Other things that you can do is you can restate what the sentence is about. So you can put that word in a different context. Also, you can look at examples. What examples are there in the passage about that word. Next, look for explanations. Are there any words that help explain that word in the passage? Lastly, look at word structure. What is about the word structure that can help you identify that word? For example, if I looked at biology, I could split biology into bio and ology. Bio is living things, ology is the study of, so biology is the study of living things. Next, try to avoid using the dictionary. Because there's times when you just will not have that ability to go and look up a word. So you want to use these useful hints. Next, you want to identify the writer's purpose and tone. And there are two questions that you can ask yourself. The first question is, who is the intended audience? And the second question that you'll want to ask is, why is this being written? Some things that you want to look at is, is this article or paper intended to be persuasive? And if it is, you'll find biased words and positive or negative connotations. If you see biased words or positive or negative connotations, you know it's going to be persuasive. If it is not persuasive, maybe it is informative. If it is informative, it is less biased. It includes facts, supporting data, and it allows the reader to make up their own mind. Unlike a persuasive article or paper, the paper is based on one side. Whereas if it's meant to inform, it gives both sides with facts and data and allows the reader to decide which one they would prefer. Next, you want to be able to distinguish between a fact and opinion. And the first thing we'll want to discuss is an assumption. An assumption are the beliefs or set opinions that an author may have already. So you want to make sure you look for those assumptions right off the bat. Next, we'll want to go over the difference between a fact and an opinion. A fact can be proved. That is a major thing about a fact. It can be proved. Next, let's look at an opinion. And the difference between a fact and an opinion is that an opinion cannot be proved. That is why it's an opinion. When looking at opinions, there are a few words that I want you to look out for. The first type of word is a evaluative word. The other one is a judgmental. 
For example, if I said, I believe. Next, you want to look at speculation and probability that are used in future tense. These are four types of words that you want to look out for when you're dealing with an opinion. Now let's look at making a logical inference. When you're making a logical inference, you are making an educated guess based off the information that you were given. It's also called reading between the lines. And some useful hints for when you are doing this would be support your inference with the evidence and facts in the article. Also, read the paragraph more than once. Next, let's look at summarizing. When you're summarizing, you're giving a shortened version of what you just read. So you want to make sure it's shortened and not include every little detail that you just read. Some things that you want to include in your summary is the main idea. You want to make sure that it's in sequence. So you want to make sure that it's part one, two, three, instead of part three, one, two. So make sure you go in order. Also, you want to provide accurate information. Let's discuss vocabulary. Vocabulary matters, especially in the medical field, because it helps you become accurate, concise, and consistent. It is necessary to study all the terminology and know the definitions inside out so that you are able to do your job. For example, it would become very difficult if I was to go to, let's say, France. I don't speak French. If I was going to go to France, let's say on a vacation, it'd become very difficult to get around France if I didn't know French. Just like if you don't know medical terminology, such as overt or parameter, you will have a difficult time getting around in a hospital or a doctor's office. So you want to make sure that you know your vocab.